Today we're going to have a look at Ubuntu 2504 Plucky Puffin. This is the beta release. The final release will be due out April 17th, 2025. And I wanted to start by having a look at the installer because there are a few improvements and changes in it from previous editions. So now we're going to start in through the installer and the installation process in my setup took roughly 20 minutes or so. It might be a little bit more, a little bit less. So first we have this accessibility menu and I believe this was in the latest version, but they've been making some tweaks and adjustments to it. So you can make adjustments to your seeing, your hearing option, typing, pointing and clicking. Over here, select your keyboard layout. That's fairly similar. And then you can opt to not connect to the internet or use a wired or a wireless connection if you have. Since we're in a virtual box here, we're just using effectively a wired connection. Now you can do install it or you can try it. Try it just returns you to the desktop with the basic default settings. The installation is what you would do if you are installing it onto your system. And then if you have an automated file, this is this is uh, something that uh, is going to be more enterprise or something that you have configured, definitely more advanced. You'd have a specific installation file to tell it which types of apps and settings. For most of you, you're just going to choose your interactive installation. And then you can go with a, a default selection, which is just basic essentials, a web browser, and basic utilities. Or you can go with the extended selection, which has a selection of various Office tools, uh, LibreOffice, some extra utilities, and a web browser. So depending on which one you happen to want, you can go with that. You can install your third-party graphics and hardware or not. If you have this selected, it might install some non-free systems. I personally always do this. I'm not so open source that I care if I have a better uh, graphics driver. Each person does take that a little bit differently. And then if you want to, you can download and install additional media formats, MP3s, MP4s, movies, things like that. If you're using any form of media that's advisable, just be aware that there may be some restrictions to that in some countries. When you click in on your next, this is where we're going to have a lot of our uh, changes here. Now, what looks on the surface to be very similar, erase the disk and install or do a manual installation. Um, now we can choose a number of options. Oh, let me back up one, one more quick step here. If you have other operating systems and it has detected, in fact, I'm not sure why it hasn't detected this. This build actually has a uh, Linux Mint build on it where I'm testing this installation app. You will see other options when I did my actual installation. I did see all the other options and you could uh, um, install alongside, you could uh, erase the disk and install, you could replace the old Linux installation with a new one. A lot of that's going to be depending on how the configuration of the uh, current disk is. So depending on what you see, you might see more options on this screen here. And then down here we can do no encryption or we can encrypt. And then we have advanced options. This is actually a nice new feature inside of here. We can do the no encryption. We can encrypt with a passphrase. This is typically what I use. Basic Lux encryption with LVM. Very good, very secure encryption for Linux. There's LVM with no encryption. We can do ZFS without encryption, ZFS with encryption. If you scroll down, uh, now I'm on a virtual box, so this option is not here, but now uh, Ubuntu is starting to experiment with using that same TPM chip that Windows is starting to require. Uh, now Windows requires it. Ubuntu, notice we had to get into the advanced options, but if you want to use your hardware keys in your motherboard, you can use this option and have very good at rest encryption that you don't have to interact with very much like Windows. Just a note, you do need to make sure you have that backup keys in case your TPM module goes bad or you need to get into that data some other way. So this is the nice newer feature that they've been talking about a little bit. We've talked about it on the channel. This is now experimentally uh, implemented into the system. 
And then here we can create your passphrase. That's going to be to encrypt everything. Let's go back up to no encryption. So we'll skip that. And this is where you enter your user account and then confirm and hit install. I'm not installing on this one. I just wanted to show you the installation process. From this, you enter in your name, hit the next button, confirm everything, and then the installation at this point in time is going to take about, as I said, 15 to 20 minutes is what it took me in my current setup. And this is uh, done on the um, on an MSI computer with an i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and I've appointed the virtual machine 8 cores and I think 8 gigs of RAM. So let's go ahead and look at the installation now. So now on our login screen, we're going to click on our username there, and then you'll see the options down here. The default session is Wayland with X as still as an option, but we'll just go ahead and keep it on Wayland for now. Enter my super secret pass key. It's definitely not one, two, three. And now we have the very first time we boot into the system. So we can have, we can see here we are on Plucky Puffin, the development branch. We can release the uh, view, the release notes there. Let's go ahead and pull that up and we'll do a brief walk through that. Um, let me go back to here though, before we get there. And over here, we'll go ahead and hit our next. So do you want to share data or not? I'm not a huge fan of that sharing data. So we'll go ahead and not do that. We can now open the App Center if you want to add more applications. We're going to look at the App Center later, and it looks like that's really our only our options. Okay, well, it looks like we don't actually have release notes for this. Is uh, Let's see. Well, maybe we do. Okay, let's see. Well, let's go ahead and accept all because we're getting out here. Let's just see if there's anything going on here. Release notes will provide an overview. Uh, support lifestyle supported for nine months until January 2026. Remember that the official release is going to be April 17th, unless something changes. And then we have new features here. Uh, the Linux kernel, they're doing uh, 614. Let's go ahead and verify that with a quick U name. And 614 indeed is what we have. So that's awesome there. And then uh, let's see what else we got down here. If there's anything there, uh, there's Ubuntu desktop installs and upgrades. Let's just go ahead and walk through my list, what I had planned on talking about. So we've already covered the installation. Now we have the GNOME version 48 in this. So the GNOME version 48 brings a number of features. The most prominent one mentioned right now is the well-being feature. So this will allow you to set screen time limits, how many hours a day, and then do you want to grayscale everything once you have passed your, your time. You can do break reminders for your eyesight. You can do movement reminders. So you'll get a right here, I'm um, no, five minutes slash 30 minutes. Uh, let's see, five minutes, 30, um, I think, I think a five minute break for 30 minutes or something. So it'll give you uh, notices and things like that. So this is a new feature, still kind of working on refining it. And so hopefully that is something that, uh, we will, we will get. Now the other feature that, uh, I don't have a real good way to illustrate it, but the notification stack. So if a single application is giving you multiple notifications, they stack on top of each other. So you don't get constant barrages of notifications. So those are some of the features that 6.4 brings us. Uh, so the uh, we already mentioned the kernel 614. What the kernel 614 is going to give us is Ryzen support for uh, AI NPUs, if that is your thing. Also, RHEL-TEC Ethernet controllers, which has been an issue. This version of Ubuntu also carries with it NVIDIA 570 GPU driver support as well. So now over here we have um, uh, inside of our app store, uh, one of the new features that we should have is we should actually have GIMP 3.0, unless there's a reason to hold it back. So uh, this is from Snap. So here's um, uh, GIMP 3.0. So if you are a GIMP user, you will have the brand new version of GIMP. Uh, downloadable inside of your system here, which uh, in my experimentations with GIMP 3.0 have so far been excellent. Uh, there's a few small regressions on a few tools, but those have been um, uh, 
other tools have been uh, improved. Oh, look at that. Their images are still old. They're still saying GIMP 210 in there. All right. The other feature that, uh, or the other application change is we have, um, they replaced the old document viewer with papers. Uh, so I, in my initial review of looking at GNOME 48, papers was not actually amazing. Maybe they've improved some function, but I could open PDFs and nothing else, despite the documentation suggested I could open a lot of things, including eBooks and, and other, uh, other various documents that in and of itself, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, and there we are. I always seem to have these types of things. Let's uh, not sure what's going on there, but something's popped up. All right. So if you're new to Ubuntu, um, so the, the, you can see the layout is, uh, kind of matches, the how the old unity layout was. It's kind of distinct to Ubuntu. You can kind of tell an Ubuntu system by what it looks like. Uh, and, uh, I think uh, Ubuntu as a distro has fallen a little out of favor, particularly from the people who have come to Linux to care more about their privacy. And the reason for that is Ubuntu has seemed to align itself more with uh, corporate trends than it has with, uh, privacy focused trends. And some people don't like that. And I'm kind of one of them. I like and respect Ubuntu for what it is, but I'm not a huge fan of the UI and I'm not a huge fan of the fact they push the snap packages uh, as priority over any other forms of packages. And effectively what that means is that all of their applications are nice, easy, and containerized, which is good. However, they are distributed through a proprietary centralized model, which is bad. Uh, but if I end up looking for an, an individual application, we've already looked at GIMP. Uh, so here's Audacity. I can filter by the Debian packages, which are those in the repository and the snap packages. Now I have no idea. Like Debian has an Audacity. I have no idea why it's not giving me the option to sort for that. Let's go ahead and have a brief look at GIMP again. So there's the snap once again. Debian has GIMP in it. So it would appear as though if a package is available in both the Debian repository and a snap, they are not even allowing you to install it, at least through the software center. Let's see what happens if I try and install something uh, inside of this. So let's do sudo apt install. Let me do a sudo apt update first, since I haven't done that since setting up this system. Let's go ahead and do that. Make sure we have everything up to date. Everything is good. So we'll do a sudo apt install GIMP and let's see what that does. So let's see, it's installing GIMP. It's going to add some extra tools. It's installing a few options here. So it looks as though this is going to be the version from the Debian repository. So you can kind of see that in the easy to use GUI software manager, it doesn't seem to allow you to install the packages that some of us like myself uh, using Linux. Um, I'm not a fan of these pre-containerized packages, although I do admit that they can work pretty well. So, uh, let's go ahead and pull that up. It did look like it still gave us GIMP 3.0. So, you know, the Debian repository has already pushed that out. So this is the loading screen. You can see GIMP 3.0.0. Now I think 3.0.1 or 3.0.2 is out. Uh, I think they are, but you can see here, I installed this from the repository. And, uh, I did not, uh, I did not have to install it through the GUI. And that's one of the reasons why I think some people are not a huge fan of Ubuntu these days. Although that being said, it is a nice, easy user-friendly layout because the, a person just switching to Linux, they don't understand the differences between the snaps and the repository softwares and the flat packs. They just see, oh, here's an easy, clean place to install safe software and you can install it. No big deal. I'm okay with that. Uh, it's not my personal cup of tea, but that's the beautiful thing about Linux is it doesn't really matter. As far as the system itself, you can see the, uh, the desktop options here. Here's your desktop icon settings, display settings. You can change your backgrounds. Let's have a brief look at this. So this is the Ubuntu size here. So we can make our icons smaller. We can move them around. I'm not sure why they prioritize them to that side, but they do. Oh, well. We can auto hide the dock or not. And then we can do a panel mode or a dock mode. And then 
if I were to use Ubuntu, in fact, when I have, I would make the stock pretty small and basically configure that type of stuff that I want. Do you want to include volumes, network drives, throw the trash can? Yes, those are all good options. So this is a very nice, a very nice layout. So the tools that they have inside the settings panel are very good. You can kind of make from this what you want. You can now add your accent colors as you like. So if you want to change away from the traditional orange and purple look, make it something more of your own, you can do that. And you can see we have a number of different, very, very beautiful pictures here to choose from. Did a great job on their art. So you'll see these ones here, you'll see that they look split like this. This is if you are doing a layout which will adjust the colors for uh, daytime or nighttime mode, it will go more bright during the day and more dark mode during the night. So just be aware that there's some of those options uh, for you to have. So there is, let's go ahead and go with that one because I really like that picture, that's beautiful. All right, uh, so other options in here. I don't think there's gonna be anything in here that's specifically unique to Ubuntu. A lot of this is just gonna be your GNOME. So overall, on just a cursory brief look, the system itself looks really good. It functions pretty well. Let's just do a brief look here. Let's do Ubuntu 2504, and I just wanna pull up a couple of the uh, articles that I saw about it as well. And you'll kind of see that uh, uh, here's the release schedule. So we're here at the beta release. I downloaded this right after the beta came out. We'll have a re release candidate by April 10th and we'll have the final release April 17th. We talked about the installation or the, yeah, the installer differences. Uh, the encryption with TPM encryption is your biggest major change here. The Linux kernel 6.14, uh, this is, uh, we have better support for Ryzen MPUs, AMD GPU, uh, Panic support, and RHEL-TEC um, Ethernet controllers. Also, HT, I didn't talk about it, HDP is in this as well. Uh, it is not, not featured in this article, um, but uh, HDP support has been put in. It is not enabled by default, but it is, uh, you can in, uh, enable it if you need that feature, but it does come with a few regressions, namely that uh, your you know keyboard shortcuts and things will not work for volume controls, things like that. Uh, as far as other options uh, inside of here, there's not a ton of other major changes. They're adding uh, just a few progressive tweaks here and there, refining the system, upgrading the packages. So we're not expecting to see a whole lot new out of this system, just better modern hardware support and a few mo new modern features. So overall though, this version of Ubuntu looks to be very good. And if you are an Ubuntu user or interested in Ubuntu, I'd encourage you to go ahead and give this a download, give it a try, and let them know if there happen to be any issues that you have found. Other than that one little prompt we had, I should have actually hit the report error on that one. I'm, I forgot I'm over here, but um, you can, uh, of course, give them some feedback, and that will always help them refine it, have a better product at the very end. So there is our very brief look at Ubuntu 2504. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And we will see you next time.